Welcome back to Drawing with Trobo, and today we're going to be looking at how to make some winter birch trees. Now for this project we're going to be using some cool colors to convey a sense of winter. And we're also going to be talking about negative space and positive space, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so for this project we're going to need some masking tape or painter's tape. It comes in either uh, blue or tan. I'm going to use the blue just so it's easier for you to see on the picture. And I'm going to tear it so it's about the same size as the paper, maybe a little bit longer. And each one of these pieces of tape is going to represent one of my birch trees. So I'm going to rip off three different pieces and I'm going to place them kind of uh, in different intervals, like spacing wise, from each other. I don't want it to be just like three right in a row and about evenly spaced because forests aren't like that. They're random. So I'm spacing them kind of randomly, maybe one off to a side then two closer together. <laughs> kind of be careful. It's really sticky. And then when I put it on there, um, I think I'm going to add a couple uh, branches too. And so what I'm going to do with another piece of tape is I'm going to take it and I'm going to tear it very carefully in half. And those are going to be my branches. Now, uh, while I'm doing this, let's say you don't have any masking tape. What you can do is you could just draw these shapes. But when we go to paint the sky, it's going to be a lot easier if you have that tape. Because you can just paint right over the tape. And our tape is going to protect the paper underneath it. And so you can do it without the tape. But it just makes this uh, process a little bit easier. But So if you don't have tape or your parents don't have any, make sure you ask. Um, scotch tape, like the normal like clear tape that you wrap. Christmas presents or birthday presents with, uh, though it's not going to work because when you when you tear it off, it, it'll take the paper with it. So it, it needs to be painter's tape because it's made to be uh, taken off and, and thrown away. So if you don't have tape, that's fine. But once I have all the tape in place, looks like I have three nice trees, and they're all different too. Like one has two branches, one has just one branch. I'm going to draw the horizon line, all right, and that's going to be the snow that the trees are sitting in. Now I need to paint all of the top a nice blue color and so I want this to be really wet and because of the masking tape I can paint right over it and it's going to protect the paper underneath so I can just do big wide horizontal going left and right strokes horizontal I want to make sure all of my strokes are horizontal because the sky goes horizontal it goes left and right if you look at clouds they kind of go left and right sure they might kind of like stack and go vertical but they always have kind of this horizontal motion to them so make sure you're painting horizontally I'm making sure that I dip my paintbrush in the paint and then I go left and right and then I'll get some more water from my water well and I'll add more water. You don't need to get paint every single time. The nice thing about watercolor is that you're taking this water and you're turning it into whatever color oval you're spinning it into. So keep going left and right, left and right. I'm almost done painting the sky with the blue, but I'm not going to stop there because just using blue is a little boring and I think we can make this art just a little more fun. And so what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of purple to it. And the reason why I'm adding purple is because one, blue and purple are neighbors on the color wheel and so they mix really well together. Uh, if you add a little bit of blue to purple, you'll get a purplish blue. And if you add a little bit of purple to blue, you'll get a purplish blue. And so these colors mix really well and it looks a little bit more fun makes the, the painting a little bit more interesting and so what I'm just doing is adding a little bit of purple to the blue paint and it's still wet and then I add some water and I try to uh, to blend it I want to blend it so it's not like any purple stripes or purple strokes I just want it to be a very light purplish blue so it looks kind of like maybe like the winds kind of blowing or there's like some variation maybe like this the Sun is kind of like going down and you get these variations of color it just makes the, your, uh, your landscape just a little more interesting to look at. All right, once you have it done and it's still wet, I'm going to show you a little painting hack that you can do with watercolor that's really cool. I'm going to take just normal table salt, I and I saw, you know, the salt shaker that's on your dinner table. I'm going to put just a little bit in my hand, and I'm going to grab a pinch of it, and I'm going to sprinkle it over the wet paint. And what's going to happen is the water is going to be absorbed by the salt. The salt's going to kind of like suck it up, and there's going to have this really cool effect when it dries. It'll look kind of like a, a snowy effect. And you don't need to go crazy with the salt. All right, so I let my painting dry overnight, and now that it's all dry, I can start to remove the masking tape, all right? If you try to do it while it's wet, sometimes the wet paint can like bleed into the trees, and we don't want that at all. And so I'm carefully removing the masking tape. I'm peeling it very slowly. If for a second it starts to tear, I'm gonna stop right away and I'm going to start from a different angle. So if it starts to tear from the top, 
start going from the bottom. And you might still, even if you're really careful, it might take a little bit of the paper, like right there. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go from the right side. You just got to be careful and be observant. Look and see what's happening. And what you're seeing now is because the tape protect, protected the paper, right now we have what is known as positive space and negative space. All right, the trees, all right, are the positive space, and then all the shapes around it, the sky, is the negative. So positive is any object that takes up space, like you, your desk, your Chromebook, those take up space. But air is negative space. There's nothing there. And so really good art has a mixture of positive space, objects, and negative space, air and emptiness. So right now, my positive space looks very bare. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the tree trunks of the trees and they're kind of like, a, this looks like a bucket or a U-shape. Kind of just goes down, then goes over. Try to make it a little bit round. Try to make sure that it's the same thickness as the tree trunk. Don't make it like a super skinny tree trunk or a really fat one. I mean, I guess they sometimes can get a little wide at the end. But I'm going to just play, play it safe and make it about the same thickness. And then I'm going to do my shadows. And for your shadows, you don't want it to be super black. You want it to be more gray. So if you feel like the, the paint is a little dark, make sure you're just adding a little bit of, of water to it. I should do the shadow first on the, the snow. Make sure that they're all going the same direction. If the light is coming from the right, then it would cast a shadow going left diagonal. And so now I am going to add another shadow to this tree. Now when I go to draw the shadows on the tree trunks, I gotta remember that the shadow is always going to be on the left side. You gotta pick a side. You could do it on the right side, but then I would need the shadow on the ground to be going at the other angle. So you just wanna be consistent. All right, there's only one light source, so all the shadows are going the exact same direction. So since I drew my shadows going to the left, that means I got to put a shadow on the left side of all the branches and the tree trunk. All right, so you'll notice the one on the far left, those two shadows touch. All right, that's because the, the tree trunk itself has white on the right. So this one will have shadow all on the left side, and then for this last tree trunk, it is shadow on the left. Of the tree trunk and on the left side of that branch. If there's a little bit of uh, blue parts that it kind of like seeped and then went underneath the tape, that's okay. You can just pretend like there's some snow right there. That happens. Now once you're done with the shadows, you're gonna have to let your painting dry again because when I go to do the stripes on the birch trees, um, if you start doing it while the, the shadows are still wet, they're, it's going to bleed and it's not going to look very sharp. And so what I want to do is I want to make these lines really skinny and narrow. And when I'm doing it on the branches, I want it to be the same angle. So they're kind of diagonal. But on the tree trunks, they're left and right, horizontal. And I kind of want to do a variety of different stripes. Like maybe do one on the left, then one on the right, then maybe two on the left. I want it to be random because trees are random. All right, there's not really a pattern on the, the stripes of a birch tree. It's really random. So I want to make sure that it looks like it looks from nature and not something that's man-made. Like usually man-made, uh, a lot of patterns, you know, on shirts and stuff. I mean, every once in a while you do find patterns in uh, nature too, like fish scales and stuff like that. But for the, the, these birch trees, you know, it's a random texture. So I'm just kind of randomly putting these striped lines left and right. And I'm going to fast forward and you can see me finish doing the lines on the other two trees. I think this is one of those projects that's super simple, but it's visually so appealing. Like it looks really cool, it's really simple, and looks great hanging up on a wall. It's all finished, looks like a nice little winter scene, and I'm all finished. Well kiddos, I hope you had fun making your winter trees. Um, it's a really simple project, but it's very visually pleasing. Like it looks fun, it looks cool, and um, I hope you uh, you know can take some of the techniques that you've learned here, maybe apply them to other works of your art. So make sure you keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.